So I've had the Weber Workshops key for about seven-ish months now. I thought it was time for a update review just to give you a little bit of extra information if anything has changed, if I like anything, if I dislike anything since making that review. You can check that review out. I'll link it in the description down below. I also did a Sete 270 versus Weber Workshops key grinder comparison. But before we get into that, I think it's time to make some coffee. Shoo. I branded my own maple syrup and other reusable containers for fun. I actually have a video about this without a link as well, just because I'm extra like that. I think my milk texture is good, but I'm gonna try and do something, maybe just a simple little heart. See if I could do maybe a little stacked tulip. Okay, 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 I did something cute. that first sip of coffee. Seriously, sometimes I think I only get up just so I can make and drink my coffee. I love it so much. Let me know if you're one of those people down below as well. Oh my God, I love coffee so much. And by the way, all the products that you just saw me use, I will link all of them in the description down below as well as any of the reviews. And if you do consider buying them, please do use the affiliate links. It gives me a little kickback, but it costs you nothing. So it helps support the channel so I can keep buying gear and products so I can review them. It'll be really greatly appreciated. But if you don't have to buy anything, please don't buy anything you don't need. So that was me making my coffee. That was my workflow every morning, pretty much. I would like to start today's update with the mess. So we have the magic tumbler, which is supposed to be this whole revolutionary, mess-free situation. So is it actually mess-free? Kind of. It really depends on many things. So first of all, it depends on the user error. It depends how good you are at taking the magic tumbler out without knocking the wiper. Because if you knock the wiper, you're going to get a little bit of coffee that was stuck on the wiper to fall, especially if you're in the colder months of the year and there's a bit less humidity out there, so it's more staticky and you're not doing RDT, for example, then yeah, it can get messy. So I have seen some people on Home Barista, they would essentially mark where the wiper is on the shaft so they had a visual cue of when to stop the machine so that the wiper would align at the same place or approximately the same place every time so that they had a bit more control of how to wiggle the magic tumbler out. Now I haven't felt the need to do that because when I pull it out, I can kind of see where it is and then I just try to angle it out so that the magic tumbler doesn't hit the wiper. I also found that when I would tap tap my portafilter on my portafilter holder, if there was some coffee here and I was tapping too strong, that whatever coffee was just kind of lingering in here while the tumbler was off, then it would knock some coffee down. So I just started to be a bit more mindful about that and not tap as hard. And I, I don't have to tap very hard actually because you're just trying to settle the grounds into the portafilter. I had that little tabletop vacuum cleaner that I will link down below, not just for the coffee cleanup, but for using around my house. It's so 
accessible and so easy to use and so lightweight. But I mean, if you have like a small handheld other vacuum cleaner that's nearby your kitchen, that'll work. You could use the Weber Workshop's coffee brush or you could just use that to clean your counter. I find that the coffee bean that you use also will make a difference in terms of how much mess. And there's so many variables in this, but in general, I found the darker roasts that are perhaps less dense as well, just cause like there's more humidity removed, will have more static. I find that it just tends to cling a little bit more onto the wiper stuck on there, as well as the little black piece that's right next to the wiper. And so anytime that you remove the magic tumbler, any little bit of movement or you knock something just slightly, it can end up causing that to drop onto the la wooden landing pad. So that has been my experience, but mostly I'm doing a medium to light to a very light roast once or twice that I did use a darker roast and I all of a sudden everything just got way messier. That was my own experience. I don't know if you have a different experience, always feel free to chime in down below. That way there's just more information going for more people. Also, the Magic Tumbler, as great as it is, and I do really like the Magic Tumbler, if you are not careful, and it's happened once or twice, that the plug in here wasn't fully set properly, it was slightly angled, well, it didn't really have a seal, right? So the coffee would end up just making a mess everywhere. It's happened like once, so it, I, I don't see it as a major concern, but I'm just mentioning it where I was just a bit rough with pulling the Magic Tumbler out and it moved, and so overall, I find the Magic Tumbler works fantastic. I've also seen other people use the Weber Workshops key in a more traditional way, using the standard tumbler and then creating a 3D print, maybe with magnets that would go underneath here with the port of filters. So it was a very more standardized way of working. Do I WDT? Have I felt the need to WDT? No. The Weiss distribution technique, which is the little thin tool to even everything out, I haven't felt the need to do that. I remember seeing a James Hoffman video where he was talking about that and trying it out with and without, and he didn't really see a significant difference. I haven't felt the need to buy a WDT because the cups that I'm getting are very consistent. So don't fix what ain't broke. I wanna simplify my life. And I find with the Weber Workshops key, I can simplify my workflow significantly, <laughs> which I feel in Espresso, you can either really love all the steps or you could be like, well, there's a lot of steps. I might want to reduce it. So I'm very happy with the steps that I do have to take, which is I feel a little bit less. Maybe I've also just been less picky about my coffee overall and satisfied with more cup. It, I find it does more of a declumping rather than really what a WDT does, but I don't find that there's enough static. And I find that do a little bit of a swirl inside the magic tumbler and then you put it on the portafilter, you remove the plug and you do another little swirl in there just to get the coffee nice and distributed in there. Then I do a little tap just to settle everything. Then I do the tamp. Just be careful when you do the swirl. This is not like a dosing funnel. So it's a little bit on the big side, but there is a little lip that it sits on the portafilter, but it's not magnetic or anything so that there can be situations where you are a little bit over enthusiastic with the swirling. Perhaps the magic tumbler, which act, is acting like your dosing funnel at this point, slightly tilted. And when you do the swirl, the coffee just blah, spits out. It's a possibility. I think it's happened to me one time. You learn quick. <laughs> None of this is finicky. I'm just saying that these things happen and these things usually happen before I have my first coffee. RPM, the fun of the Weber Workshops key is the adjustable RPM from 30 to 150. A lot of people that I've seen are saying that they get really good results with the 110, 90 to 110 specifically. I'm not sure what it is. I think that there's just so much new information still coming in with RPM in the coffee industry that we're still kind of learning about it. I have just decided to leave it at 30 RPM. It's quiet. And with lighter roasts, I feel like it's just gonna give me a little bit more clarity rather than body, which is what I'm chasing after at this point. I do enjoy the lower RPM for the static reasons. But now that we're in the summer and the humidity in my place is more like 50% instead of like 20, I may actually start playing with a higher RPM, we'll see. In one of Lance Hendricks's video, which I will link down below, he mentions that under 100 RPM, you kind of have diminishing returns. I've gotten so used to that time that it takes to grind the coffee, like maybe a minute, two minutes at that low RPM that I use that time to put in the sugar into my cup and the milk into my jug. So I'm using all that time. If you have the Weber Workshops key or you have a coffee grinder with an adjustable RPM, I'd love to hear your input. What RPM setting you like to use and why, and if you've noticed anything different now 
the noise levels, I, as well as other people, have seemed to have quite a bit of worrying noises at the very beginning, some very loud thumping noises. It settled and then there was some sort of rotational noise. I'm just hoping it's not any type of mechanical, physical wear and tear, but it seems that whatever it was, it's settled down. So if you've just, just, just got a Wurble Workshops and you're hearing a little bit of noise, I would say wait a bit, use it for a month and see how the noise level goes. I don't find that any of those mechanical grinding sounds affected the coffee in the cup at the end of the day. And some people will argue, well, this is a very luxurious grinder. It should be like perfect. And yes, I agree. And honestly, I'm a very finicky person and I like perfection, but at the end of the day, it worked really well. It was giving me a consistent grind, the noise. I think things in there just needed to settle down. Should it have been fixed in the factory? Yes. Could it have been affected in shipping and some things maybe moved a little bit and then they just resettled back when you got them? Also possibly yes. They go through some pretty insane distances and situations to get to your front door into your home and i overall find it so quiet that even once i had grinded some coffee and i was cooking and the stove fan was on and i forgot that i had grinded some coffee and i couldn't even hear it anymore because once the coffee is grinded it's so quiet especially at a low rpm 20 minutes later when i turned off the fan and i was done cooking i just heard grinding without anything in there or just on and I realized, oh my God, I've had this thing on for like the last 20 minutes, so it is quiet. Onto the grind ring adjustment. How do I like this? So in the first review, I have mentioned it's a bit finicky. That hasn't really changed. I don't love it, but it works. I don't hate it either. I'm kind of neutral or accepting of it. It is a negative that you can't adjust the grind setting while the grinder is on the rotational direction of the burrs and this it can cause it to seize and you don't want that to happen you always need to adjust the grind settings while the grinder is off so if you're going from espresso to pour over constantly you may have to stop once in a while to turn on the grinder and whatever is between the burrs grind it and then keep adjusting so that can be annoying if you are constantly going from pour over to espresso especially because there isn't any type of way for you to know how many rotations you've done. So you have zero to 14 on the grind setting ring, but you don't have any type of indicator on how many rotations is done. So let's say you're going from pour over to espresso and maybe you did 24. So you went beyond one whole rotation and you went on vacation, you came back, you don't remember what your grind setting is because you only have the numerical values from zero to 14. You don't know that you're now at one full rotation plus 10 at 24. So that could be a negative if you are going back and forth like that all the time. I mainly use this for espresso and I have the Arco as a hand grinder and I don't really do pour over all that much anymore. So it's less of an issue for me. I have both. If you're looking for that one grinder and you're really doing a 50-50 espresso pour over one day to the next or within the same day, I feel like at that point it'll depend on you. I don't necessarily find it the most elegant either when you have to do a lot of rotations. When you're doing micro adjustments to just do little small turns with one hand or two hands, it's grind consistency. I will be talking about espresso because I use my Weber Workshops key for espresso. I find it super consistent. I find that the break-in period is very, very low. And even at the very beginning, say like maybe after a month of just one, maybe two coffees a day, that it really started to dial in really well. Basically, when I find the grind setting for a coffee, I stick to it and I barely even have to change it as the coffee ages. I was quite surprised about that. It just tends to stay. And I came from a Sete 270 where things would kind of move on its own and you'd have to keep readjusting and fine tuning. And I don't have to do this here, especially with the locking rings. Once it's set, it's set. The steps, I've never found myself needing to go in between steps. I find that the steps are perfectly adequate for me dialing in my coffee, getting it to taste good, and being happy with the result in my cup. I have seen in general that most people have been happy with that, but then, you know, once in a while, there'll still be somebody that really wants that micro fine adjustment. I personally like that it locks into place. It's way more consistent. It cannot move. That is the distance that the birds are gonna be in its set, and nothing will really affect it until you move the grind ring. And in terms of the stalling, I've had way less issues as well as those 
burrs season in and whenever there is stalling you can always go at a higher rpm which i have done as well so overall i would say i'm very happy with the grinder i haven't felt the need to look elsewhere for any other grinders i like the way it looks i like the way it functions i like the workflow the magic tumbler i think it's innovative and industrial and clean looking it fits my aesthetic it fits the way i like making coffee it's by no means perfect but i Finding a perfect product, especially in the coffee world, is pretty difficult, I feel, to come by. I like having a one grinder that can be in the middle ground and can give me that clarity with a little bit of body. So that is everything for me for this little update six month-ish video. I hope that this helps you and gave you some more information. And please, if you have the Weber Workshop Scheme, you have something to chime in, please do so in the description down below. It's gonna be a nice resource for other people looking into this grinder to be able to consult. Like the video, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Share the video. Subscribe if you haven't already to my channel. I talk about coffee. I do product reviews to optimize your life as well as mental health and how-tos and anything else that tickles my fancy. All right, bye.